sama je jedan od najuspješnijih menadžera Bož grupacije u području sigurnostnih rješenja, gospodin Olaf Cajsiger. Radio do sada u Njemačkoj, Mađarskoj, Ujedinim Arabskim Emiratima, a trenutno je u odjelu sigurnostove kompanije u Eindhovenu u Holandiji. Kasvija komunikativnosti i prezentacijske veštine, u što ćete se moći i uvjeriti u narednim minutama. Kroz temu izvucite maksimum iz umrežene sigurnosti, iskusite prave pogodnosti za korisnike. Gospodin Cajsik prezentirat će kako maksimalno unaprijediti sigurnost poslovnih okruženja. Gospodin Cajsik, izvolite. Continuously, we want to have continuously full control of all the systems, 
and a comprehensive overview of the relevant data information at any moment of time to take certain actions. So basically, we are talking about situation awareness and fast response. The critical question is how to maximize these. How to maximize these to maximize the customer benefit of the security solution. How to give the operator during the stressful time, the stressful event of an alarm, a sense of necessary and needed information to enable him to take the right decision and take a fast response. How to align the different elements of a security and safety system across the various domains to realize a smooth operation. So, I would like to take the human body as a sample to make it more visible for you. So with our eyes, with our ears, mouth and fingers, we can observe, we can experience and sense the environment we are surrounded by. However, the information is not kept at the sensor, at the finger, but it's rather relayed by the nerve system to the operating system, the brain. The brain is a command and control center, you could say. The brain processes all the data and it initiates certain actions. Some of them are immediate actions, without decision. Some are done in a planned manner, or some are based on purpose decisions by the operator, by the brain. And of course you need muscles to realize these actions. So what does it supposed to mean for a security and safety system? So basically, with security system, the environment scanned, checked, relevant information is conveyed by the network in the central operating system, the brain, the management system. And the management system decides either automatically to take an action or to get triggered by the operator, the owner of the brain. For example, doors can be opened, can be opened loud speakers can be triggered, or whatever. And what can be done to improve the overall performance sorry, of all these elements to again to increase customer benefit. On the sensor level, it means improving the sensitivity and adding additional functionalities in order to reduce the amount of so-called false alarms significantly. The transmitter of the signals, the network, the systems and the underlying net, uh, the architecture, they have to be they have to feature a maximum of resilience and redundancy. If one way cannot transmit the signal, it has to take another way. The hardware, the software, and especially the structure of the same, has to work on a high performance. And the actors have to work with highest reliability and accuracy levels. So all these aspects have to be improved and maximized to ensure a first grade security and safety solution. I'd like to give you a few examples how the letter has been realized in the sensor, network, management level, and actor level. So for example, video cameras have been become smarter every year. Oh, sorry, I can also watch this one because I've not seen them always turning around here, but I see here's also the presentation, sorry. <laughs> Besides the improvement for the image processing in order to achieve a perfect picture that any light conditions, auto-tracking, also called eye-tracking, has become the necessity to especially outer applications. That is basically a feature that you catch a person and that with a PTZ camera you can follow him. But you can imagine how difficult it is if you have two persons crossing the lines. So how can the camera know which person to follow? So industry is working to make more intelligence into the system that if that person is detected and tracked, regardless if his lane is interfered, the, follow, the fellow is still tracked. Built-in analytics makes the camera even smarter. So certain suppliers have started to introduce IVA not just centrally, but also in the cameras. Now a little bit about network. The network is very often the bottleneck due to the high volume of video data. Whereas filters in the camera, like mentioned video analysis, can adjust the amount of video data. The network and the architecture are crucial elements to make sure that high quality pictures 
are not affected by network issues. Nowadays, it is becoming increasingly important to be able to view security coordinates from everywhere, from remote sites. We're not outside because, for example, when, when you need to have a remote site because maybe due to security reasons, you cannot access the site physically. At the same time, the demand of viewing quality is also rising. High definition, just mentioned in the previous presentation, is now being almost standard for most applications. However, now, reviewing high quality scenes can be very time consuming, and when it's also carried out remotely, the user is dependent on the speed of the internet connection. In the case of a low bandwidth connection, HD quality material is invariably buffered, which equally takes a large time, that amount of time. The system has been developed, which is called dynamic transcoding, and it changes the video file to a different format and a bitrate without compromising on the original image quality, which is totally shown when the image is paused. This is of great benefit in terms of remote monitoring at low bandwidth. So we see also in the network, there are quite a lot of important developments to increase customer benefit. The management platform is by default central in terms of the decision-making process. An open architecture, a variety of integration opportunities into any kind of third-party systems and sensors and intuitive graphical user interface makes a difference. The more open the software, the more chance to integrate product and sensors, the more beneficial for the operator. And that is also a significant trend, which I would like to add as maybe the fourth bubble for the previous presentation, open platform is really on buzzword which is driving the industry. All the at the end, all the at the end of the process line, the importance of access should not be underestimated. A fire alarm detected in an airport needs to be addressed to present to the to the audience that can only be realized by effective loudspeakers. Dynamic loudspeakers we can adjust the performance according to the background noise. I have a few other examples also to illustrate to you what the industry is working on, on sensor level, network, brain measurement level. So for example, the intelligent at the center level um, and the performance of smoke detector is usually heavily detected by dust. <coughs> Sensors have been developed and produced which are less and less sensitive to dust. However, there are more disturbing factors like electric magnetic work, waves issued by neon lamps, energy saving lamps, which can cause a lot of false alarms. Detectors have been developed in the meantime to provide quite some robustness against electromagnetic exposure. In addition, during operation and maintenance, stability and detected performance are further enhanced by constantly measuring the electromagnetic exposure of each detector and calculating mid -term and long-term averages. These are used to predict the exceeding of threshold values even before possible false alarms can occur. Last but not least, I would like to go to the last one. Door controllers, simple door controllers, could be simple or multiple doors, a typical example of actors which can have a significant impact on business operation in case of failures. Let's assume that the network is down in the morning and the employees cannot enter the facility. It happened a couple of years ago in the town of Nuremberg that an insurance company could not open the doors in the morning. Some 5,000 people were locked outside because they did not have electronic uh, mechanical locks anymore. So after four hours, the system was up again, and they could enter the building. So we can calculate four times 5,000 persons. The business impact is significant. But in the meantime, controllers have been developed which work independently. They can handle up to 200,000 cars, and they can manage up to 40,000 events. So you can manage a couple of hours without having a proper network in place. These are only a few elements of the industry. How the industry has improved important elements in terms of reliance, resilience, redundancy, reliability, higher and smarter performance. Still, the question remains how to integrate these different elements and who could give support. So first of all, customers and users are looking for solutions, not just products. The solution should meet the expectation, also the actual requirement of the respective application. Consequently, the maximum flexibility regarding the product selection is key to success open platform again. That applies to the main specific topics, but more and more to cross-domain solutions. Video and assess control philosophy, 
um, systems. They work for years as independent systems, based on different philosophies, user interface, and platforms. But these have become common systems in the meantime. The same applies to fire evacuation. It is fair to say that open platform is not just a buzzword, but one of the drivers of the industry. There are various ways to integrate, which are mentioned here. Several tools are available, however, who takes the call which tool to take, despite the fact that each and every integration is different, and, every often, and very often it's a customized solution, the question remains if there's an entity, a party, who can give general support. One of, these one of these integration drivers is the integration partner program called IPP, an alien uh, a program which was launched in 2013 by Bosch to realize true end-to-end -end integration jobs. The maximum of safety security errors are covered like video, access control, intrusion, fire, and evacuation systems. The idea is basically to partner with other suppliers to serve the client at best. The end user should not be locked to a certain supply anymore, but rather should be in a position to get the maximum of benefits offered by the market. The IPP program is a step in the even more open platform way of working. And the results ah, sorry. The results are significant. The puzzle of the IPP partners is made of more than four hundred partners as we speak, and it's growing even more. All the members they have understood that the end user can be served at best if the project implications are commonly addressed island solutions made of proprietary citizens should no longer be the only option of an end user. What I just presented to you is the status quo. However, I would like to talk about where is the security safety industry heading to. So a standalone detector, which is shown here, is doing an excellent job by detecting fire and triggering a siren. However, the intelligence is rather limited. In large applications, we see a merger of certain subsystems into one common system, the creation of video and access control, for example. The next level the industry has just entered is the stage of smart solution management. The goal is to combine all relevant integration at hand to manage the present situation at best. A fire system which detects a fire calculates the way the fire is expanding, and based on that information, calculates the best escape routes. The level is very close to the ultimate level, and that is something which we all have to work on, which is the future. The stage at which the system is in a position to give predictions. So based on historical data, based on the circumstance data, based on quite some logic, we are in a position, or we should be in a position, to give predictions of what will happen. So based on historical data and the respective patterns of the same data, the system should give smart predictions about things to happen. In order to understand what is actually sufficient and necessary in terms of the stages, we need to understand the operators, how they use the system. So this, the, the figures which are mentioned here are based on an internal analysis within the Bosch group. So whilst the occasional user is using minimal time regarding security tasks, maybe arming and disarming the system, checking remotely, recordings, locally and remotely, a professional user spends much more time in security related topics. Nevertheless, security and safety topics are not the sole activities. The focus on a powerful software, which is easy to handle. The security operator, however, is actively working on the system. Or most important, the safety and security experts are crucial, and failures, false alarms, and bad decisions based on incorrect data could have significant incidents. Think about evacuating an airport terminal because of a false alarm. It could become very costly. Based on these categories, the aim of the security industry has to be the development systems which simplify the operator's tasks at all levels. And I would like to give you three elements for, to uh, work this purpose. Currently, the intelligence is concentrated in the main control room. The main centers are deployed in the field which send signals to the, controls, to the central system, as explained earlier. With smart and mobile devices and the connection between the central system and these mobile devices, the collaboration between the field device and the sensitive system can be improved in real time. Security guards are given extra information 
during the emergency flows. In case of a fire, the fire brigade could get detailed information how and in which direction the fire is developing. That applies to the second topic, which is important to serve operator better. We all know the endless list of alarms indicate an alarm list. Line after line after line, only alarms. What is missing is the correlation, the logic behind it. The logic which needs to be applied between the raw data. That, would, that is uh, um, one, uh, an important factor. And last but not least, the next level support, which I mentioned, the predict predictability of events. That can be achieved by detecting abnormal behavior in raw data structures. For example, nobody would pay attention if that card, which has been used for months, always in the morning, at that reader, and the second reader, then 10 minutes later, that card all of a sudden is used in a different pattern. It's stored in the system, it's available, yeah? but nobody pays attention to this. There was an extra case in London that basically one uh, person always took the same reader in the morning, the same reader in the afternoon, etc., etc. And then for a certain period of time, there was a change in the pattern. And later on it turned out to be that he was planning a bomb attack at London Airport. The raw data was available already, but nobody knew about it. Nobody paid attention to it. So, a system which can give smart predictions, that is what we all have to work on and what we Bosch are actively working on also. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, if you use a different media, your potential terrorist, however, from the operator's perspective, it can give you quite some help. Last but not least, the integration across the product lifecycle. So the multiple steps from understanding the end user challenge, designing the solution, customizing the software solution if necessary, the extra installation, somehow it's not working properly here, the actual installation and the commissioning and the operation are to be synchronized between all the parties. The integration starts with the right understanding, with the right understanding of the client's request. So the result is the input for the design consisting of the best suitable products. The more products from different vendors, the more the necessity to have an open platform again or to customize existing software platforms, which is also possible. Once it's installed and commissioned, and the handover of the system to an operational mode has taken place. The last part of the integration path comes into picture. Regular firmware and software upgrade needs to be aligned between the various components of the solution. The previously mentioned IPP is a platform to entertain these activities. In the end, I will just give you a few examples which have been realized very much in terms of integration. And uh, this uh, PA system has been installed over the last 20 years at Dubai Airport. And currently it features 25,000 loudspeakers and more than 900 amplifiers. The biggest challenge was it was a live airport. So over the years it has been expanded, expanded without affecting the existing system. India, Adlabs, that's the theme park which was opened two years ago for more than 3 million visitors. Here the uh, special, the special, um, the special of this project was basically it has to be extremely flexible because the planners already expected that the system needs to be extended for the next 10 years across all the systems. Last but not least, one from Singapore, full integrated system, and here was a special request to have a command and control center which should have an open platform for any kind of security and safety element. So a few, which are probably uh, references, which are probably a little bit more familiar to you from the region here. Oh, sorry. So some some airports, some hotels. So that has been realized by the local Porsche team during the last couple of years. Last but not least, a summary. What does it mean for you? Summarizing, I like to point out that the customer benefit of an integration system depends on various factors which I've mentioned in my presentation. The check of an NCN solution, 
the performance of the individual components, the aligned interactions between the components, professional service integrators thinking in end-to-end -end solutions, and a common platform which take care of those interactions, like the IPP program which I mentioned. So I would like to close my presentation. If you have more questions in terms of certain technical elements which I mentioned, like transcoding, if you would like to know more about the program like IPP, I'm here all day long, and I wish you also a very successful summit, and thank you for your attention.